Morning. Hi, it's Tracy. I'm here in Salem, Massachusetts. It's about midday on Sunday, the 6th, and it's uh, chilly, but sunny <laughs> for what seems like the first time in quite a while. Um, we've had a lot of snowstorms and ice storms and, you know, typical New England stuff. Um, but so I'm staying cozy today with block two of Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Um, background is neutrals and foreground or focus point is flowers, like fancy flowers or I don't know what, freaky flowers, flowering flower, something, some kind of flower. Um, um, but I'm not there yet. So right now I'm just working on the background. These are materials, um, neutrals, not my go-to for sure. Uh, but luckily I had these materials. I think this is a curtain lining and I think this is the curtain or maybe it's um, some upholstery. I'm not exactly sure. Fa um, furniture upholstery. But my mom had some offcuts from when she decorated her house and she gave them to me when they, when they moved. So luckily I ended up with some neutral colors because I got to tell you that I don't buy these. <laughs> um, on on uh, Instagram, I think it was, I, I saw this, found this artist who I, I really like her work and she kind of collages a bunch of pieces and then uses her machine to create sort of a dense um, uh, lines around the various pieces and she builds them up. Um, so I don't have a machine, I don't have an embroidery machine, I'm gonna have just a regular machine. Um, but also this is a slow stitching challenge, so um, I wanted to try to figure out how I could create that same thing. And what I did was I, uh, after looking at a bunch of places and trying a bunch of stuff on my, um, here's my sampler, or you know, my practice page, like my practice journal page, um, and um, I tried uh, different color threads and I tried different stitches. Um, and uh, th these were not making me happy, but what I finally landed on is um, I uh, chain stitched on each of the lines where the weaving met. And now I'm going back in. So you can see here's just the chain stitch, which I started with. Uh, just a very loose, very ragged um, chain stitch, nothing proper, pretty, perfect. Um, and now I'm going back in, as you can see, these lines are denser because I've gone back in with just straight stitches sort of across, um, really big, I mean, really long, very thin cross stitches, essentially, um, to tack down the fabric on both sides and then to add more depth. And then at each of the, um, crossroads here, for lack of a better word, um, I built up more of a kind of, um, not quite a square, as you can see, each one is different. Again, not trying to make each one perfect. Um, I will tell you that one of the things I really love about slow stitching is it's a knock on the ass to my uh, type A first child, right? Let it, just let it go, honey. Let it go. I'm 54 now. I, I can't, I cannot maintain that, that bullshit crap. So I'm learning how to just let go. And so all of these corners are a little different, a little... Uh, unique in and of themselves and I'll go back in and trim you know stray threads and and whatnot but so for right now where's my needle here's my needle um, for right now I am at one of these oh this is here because I just want to tell you that if you love stitching <laughs> uh, read this book it's um, it's a history of the world through the eye of a needle and it's it's so great so she's an am amazing storyteller and she has uh different chapters um each chapter is a theme captivity frailty protest community and she tells about stitching projects that speak to that theme it's so well written it's so um reader friendly it's not a dense historical thing although the history, the research this woman has done is amazing. And she talks about places she's been like, she tells a story about when she went to China and um, like went to this obscure place of China and met these people who were the only people left doing the, the um, 
stitching of their uh, ancestors in, in the way that their ancestors were doing it and how every, every stitch has meaning. And I mean, it's just a great, great book. So anyway, right now I've just gotten to this corner and I'm just using a, a couple of straight stitches to kind of create the frame there at the corner. Um, and now I'm going to go in and do some um, very loose, very raggedy uh, um, chain stitches just over each other and um, I'm really not... Uh, really not trying to be proper, <laughs> uh, but just to build up um, texture and pattern in the corner here. So I just keep turning the piece and doing a chain stitch. I think I'll go around twice and do that and just uh, you know, where I see some holes. Now I got a little fuzz here that's gonna keep sticking. So I just see where, where is there some, uh, where can I still see the fabric? And that's where I'm gonna go in with my chain stitch. And, um, Let's see, I think I'm going to go around. So I see some, still some space over here. I'm going to do one more round, I guess. So that's, that's more, better covered. Now I'm gonna go back in with some straight stitches. Oops, let me get on camera, shall I? Uh, just to go in with some straight stitches and begin to fill in, uh, but keep it messy. So here in the Northeast, at least, um, in the nor Northern Hemisphere, I should say, it is the season of Imbolc which is um, a Celtic pagan festival. Um, my spiritual tradition that I follow is inspired by kind of neo-Celtic um, paganisms. Uh, that's where my ancestors are from, the British Isles, like every, all of the, every one of those countries, I think we've got repre representation in Scotland, Ireland, Wales, um, England, and uh, some other Celtic countries, and also some Scandinavian countries. Um, that isn't why I practice um, a Celtically inspired or uh, earth honoring tradition, um, but it, it does help me feel connected to my ancestors and uh, the season. So now I'm going to go, um, I'm going to keep going up and basically I'm just doing a very long, very thin cross stitch along the edges just to build up some, some texture. I kind of want to make this line less harsh. I want it to curve a little more. I might go around one more time. Yeah, I think I'll go around one more time the outside and just take the edge off um, by doing maybe some more chain stitches that come up a little bit from the line just to soften. Yeah, see, that's better. That's just a little softer. Um, so right now, anyway, in our calendar of the year, we call it the Wheel of the Year, uh, which follows the sort of um, natural things that are happening in the world. Uh, and this particular festival is called Imolk, which is, um, I think it's an Irish Gaelic word. Uh, and um, 
it is particularly a festival of, uh, well, for the ancient Celts, the goddess Bridget, for more modern Celts, St. Bridget. Um, this, they, they actually just made this an official holiday in Ireland, um, this, uh, starting in 2023, I think it is. Um, so I'm just trying to curve around with these uh, chain stitches, which is easier to do with a chain stitch than it is to do with a straight stitch. Um, anyway, what is this festival about? Whether you celebrate it or not, there's a lot of traditions in the world that have festivals right now. Um, <laughs> I mean, Americans have Groundhog's Day. Um, and a lot of it, there's, it was just Chinese New Year, right? Um, and a lot of these are about uh, the, the coming spring, that spring is beginning to uh, prepare itself, is preparing itself, let's say it that way. Because <laughs> um, it certainly doesn't feel like that in Massachusetts right now. It's cold, and there's a lot of snow and ice on the ground. And so it's hard to think about spring right now. <laughs> um, let's see, what am I doing here? I cannot, apparently, talk and stitch. Um, but it is the time when um, many animals are, I'm um, just re-threading the needle here, um, are preparing to give birth. Um, like, for example, here in the Northeast, uh, in December, um, you could really hear the coyotes, man. You could hear them running around, screaming and yelling. And that's because it was mating season for coyotes here in the Northeast. Um, in Ireland, uh, I believe that... I'm probably going to get this wrong and somebody's going to correct me. But I believe that Imolk is... Um, uh, an Irish Gaelic word for milk because the lambs are coming into the sorry the ewes are coming into their milk as they prepare to as they prepare for lambing season. Um, the Ireland and um, the British as in general are much closer to spring than we are here because they have the Gulf Stream going up, uh, going up the left side of the country. If you're looking at a map. Um, and, uh, so their spring happens a lot sooner than ours does. Um, but even here, you know, the, the days are getting longer. The sun is coming up earlier. The sun is setting later. Um, pretty soon you're going to see snowdrops. Um, so it's happening. It's there. And that is, uh, what we're celebrating in part this festival of Imolk is um, our soul really wants the spring. It's not quite spring yet, but the seeds way deep in the earth are cracking. The animals are preparing to give birth. It's there. It's, it's there. <laughs> no, where I live, we got a lot of snowstorms to go to, through before we get there, but that's okay. It's a kind of a deep winter reflective and contemplative holiday that I really like. It's a time to kind of really just sink down into, um, into the whole idea of wintering, um, even as we are preparing, thinking about rebirth. So for me, um, I'm going to celebrate um, my growth as a stitch artist in this wonderful challenge by uh, from Roxy and Sarah. I'm going to celebrate the growth of new skills for me and um, new delights uh, in my stitching. And I invite you to think about uh, what, what do you want to let go of and release into the deep dark earth that doesn't serve you anymore uh, and release it down into the wintering earth where it can be composted into some new growth for you. So thank you and I'll see you again soon.